So we were fortunate to develop those with a bipartisan team of election officials. And then we said to the election officials around the state, we need each of you as a county board of elections to develop a security plan, provide that to the Secretary of State so that we know that you have planned for contingencies and you have these procedures in place. And we do think that that elevates people's trust and confidence in the system, knowing that we've put these security procedures in place. Now, we've done some other things that we think will help boost voter confidence. You've seen the, the transition, if a lot of you are voting, and I assume you are, or you probably wouldn't be here. We've seen the, the transition in Cuyahoga County from the punch cards to the touchscreen machines to the paper optical scan ballots that were centrally counted at the primary election. And then what you'll see is one more uh, iteration where you'll still fill out the same kind of ballot that you did in the March primary, but you yourself as the voter will have the opportunity to take that ballot and place it into an optical scanner so that it can notify you if you voted too many times in a particular race, but you'll have the satisfaction of seeing your ballot actually go into a ballot box and know that your votes were recorded on a memory card, which is then transferred to the Board of Elections, but can be verified by a hand count of those hand ballots to ensure the accuracy of the equipment. Uh, but we have 53 counties who are still using the touchscreen machines, and I, 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 I don't want to malign the touchscreen machines because the concept is fantastic because in that machine is a database of ballots that would allow in the future for us to be able to take that machine and put it in a centralized location in the county and to actually set up vote centers that voters could go to not having to worry about am I in the right precinct to cast my vote. We found difficulties with some of the way that the, these machines were engineered, but they're still being used in the 53 counties and they're being used with greater security. And uh, this year you'll see statewide post-election audits to verify the accuracy of the count, especially in the presidential election. But, but we, what we've, we've done with that though is we've, we've required those counties to use a system of backup paper ballots which I'll get into a little bit later in explaining how this works. Uh, the other thing that we've looked at was the fact that the voters' best chance at satisfaction is to have well-trained poll workers in the process. And we were aware that there had, had never been, to our knowledge, any statewide consistent poll worker training curriculum. So what you will see at your polling places this year will be something that every single poll worker in the state has been provided and it's it's a poll worker quick reference guide and so if there's a question about provisional ballots the poll worker can go to this flip chart they can see what the instructions are not easy i didn't write these laws we just have to administer them uh, they they can if they want to know about voter id we're going to have the same instructions for every poll worker to provide to every voter throughout the state of Ohio. We even get to the issue of what happens if there's a court order, what do you need to do to deal with voters who come after 7.30, what are the differences in procedures, how do you lay out the polling location, what are the presiding judge duties, and we made these basic enough that they didn't interfere with the individual nuances in each county, but that the basic things that are required by law for a poll worker to know and to do are contained right here. And, and because we understand that the better the poll worker does, the better the experience is going to be for the voter. So we look at that in the area of voting operations. Uh, we have issued so many directives that somebody informed me that when they're printed out on one side, they're thicker than the revised code. But I told them the revised code's printed on two sides. So we come out about the same. <laughs> and and, and the, the, the directives, so that you have a good understanding, they carry the force of law for boards of elections. So the boards have to follow federal and state law. Sometimes there are rules, but to allow us to be quick and nimble on our feet with changing technology, changing circumstances, sometimes even changes in the law where there may be some gaps or cracks that things could fall between, the Secretary of State has the authority and the responsibility to issue instructives in the form of directives or advisories which assist boards of elections in knowing what to do in particular situations. So we've told many of our, our board of elections officials, look at the directives that we've issued as a library, as a reference library, so that if a particular situation comes up, you know exactly what to do. 
the other thing that you'll see this year, and especially in some of the more rural counties, is we have really pushed the boards of elections on greater ADA compliance so that polling places are more accessible to people. And that's entailed in some instances polling places having to be moved. And we know that a lot of voters feel really comfortable going to the same polling place they've always gone to. But if they're, if they're not a voter who's in a wheelchair and, they, and, and ha, is not experiencing what it would be like to try to get into a place that is not accessible or have to drive up and have poll workers provide curbside voting because they can't make it into the polling location, um, I think they might feel a little bit differently. And as we all know, change can be a little bit difficult, but you in Cuyahoga County, I've got to give you the medal because I think you've dealt with the most changes in voting systems of any county that I've seen uh, in, in, in the recent future. Uh, one of the things that um, we will be doing in the Secretary of State's office is we have a Voting Rights Institute that focuses on outreach, focuses on collaborating with partner organizations such as the NAACP, uh, the AFL-CIO, the Republican Party, the Democratic Party, uh, the Advancement Project, uh, a number of different uh, voter uh, activists and voter registration groups and voter protection groups. The, the VLI will actually be staffing uh, a multi-person phone bank before election day through election day to deal with election problems that may arise in the counties in, in real time. And we'll be then dispersing that information out to our regional liaisons who are throughout the state of Ohio who can work directly with boards of elections to try to deal with, with any um, significant issues that may occur. Many times what we find with the calls that come in is that we're simply explaining what the law is and helping clarify some misconceptions and then we're relieving uh, some of the concern or the anxiety that voters have. Now, I want to recognize someone who's here today. Uh, Rick Deschant is one of the partners. And where are you? There he is, right here. OK, uh, you may recognize Rick. Um, uh, he is one of the military heroes that you are fortunate to have here in Cuyahoga County. He's the coordinator of the Veteran Services and Programs Area for the Cuyahoga Community College, and also a Coast Guard veteran who served in the Persian Gulf, Iraq, and Kuwait. Um, <laughs> And he has extensive experience with Homeland Security, uh, oversees TSA screening operations right here in Cleveland at Hopkins Airport. And he has been recognized as a hometown hero for helping to subdue an armed gunman at the Cleveland Hop Hopkins Airport uh, who had shot and wounded a Cleveland police officer. And so we're very fortunate that Rick is working with our Voting Rights Institute to coordinate a project called Operation Forward Democracy. And this is a pilot program uh, through Tri-C as an effort to recruit veterans to continue their service or to carry on the mission and serve as poll workers. And he's been successful in recruiting uh, quite a number of them already. And I, I certainly value your dedication and your commitment. And let me give you an excerpt from his recruitment letter. He says, if we as veterans want to ensure the continued support for our initiatives and causes, then we in turn need to exhibit the leadership that only veterans can bring to the forefront by supporting Operation Forward Democracy. Thank you, Rick. Uh, we also, I, I'm thrilled to see high school students here today because I know that the, the Jane and Pat have been working uh, to recruit high school students for the youth at the booth because we found that uh, high school students are some of the best poll workers that we have. Uh, with the average age of poll workers most recently having been about 72 years old, uh, that's, that's tough. We need, some, we need people who are very adept with electronic equipment. And let's face it, sometimes when you're older, it's kind of hard to see into that dark corner where to plug this machine in. And they're, they're much more able to do that sort of thing. And, and we've, we've found in working with kids voting throughout the state that students who serve as poll workers say that they are more likely to become lifelong voters, that their friends and their family vote because of, of their participation in the process. So we appreciate that. Uh, so, our, like I said, our partnership extends beyond with the boards of elections, but also with the community. Uh, one thing with partnership is it requires some give and take, and uh, we have had some very healthy dialogues with boards of elections throughout the state. Uh, I, I personally have wonderful dialogues every week with the Cuyahoga County Board. Uh, since the change in leadership and the, the drastic changes that, that they've experienced with an entirely new board, new director, new deputy director, as well as a new voting system, 
and, and I must say, Jane and Pat, you two deserve a lot of credit because uh, there was a tie vote in December of last year 